Hello everybody! So this week I'm going to be uh, continuing my story of sailing down the coast. So if you'll remember last week um, I uh, launched the boat at Severn Marina in, in uh, Virginia and sailed through Norfolk and on down the coast around Cape Hatteras and uh, we lost our dinghy on the way and recovered it in Moorhead City, North Carolina and yeah, so that was uh, it was adventurous sailing for sure. So anyway, continuing the story now, uh, this week, is the rest of my trip sailing down the coast. And I really only have still photos uh, that were shot during this time. So I'm just going to pretty quickly run through and tell you the story and share the photos that I have of it. A new place, a new home, for a while, let me feel alive. Nothing to hold me back. Take my time, just enjoy the ride. I know man, passing by, life is good, best I've ever felt. I have of it. Um, so there wasn't really anything uh, quite as crazy as the first leg of the trip. Uh, but uh, one thing that did happen that was uh, definitely uh, important is the hurricane. Um, I believe uh, Nicole, as I recall, Hurricane Nicole. Through devastating uh, was... parts of Florida's coastline, this morning, the remnants of Hurricane Nicole continuing a path of destruction and leaving millions along the East Coast to pick up the pieces. Hurricane Nicole the... um, was an incredibly late in the season hurricane that blew through, and luckily we uh, were able to take a safe harbor at one of my favorite places, which is Wrightsville Beach, North Carolina. and. Same place that on the sailing north trip we ducked out into there for weather, but this time uh, the hurricane uh, came through um, pretty much at that point just tropical storm obviously, but um, tropical storm came through and so we saw pretty strong winds first from one, one direction, then, then we caught the back end of the storm and got the same thing from the other end. Um, sustained winds for, uh, for a couple hours each time and uh winds both both directions uh were in the realm of 50 to 60 knots so it was pretty serious and um luckily for that you know incredible anchor you know ultra anchor i mean it was never a problem i'll put the uh, uh the map for the anchor alarm up and you can see that through that time we we pulled hard both directions and we never budged an inch um, the anchor held perfectly good there um that uh, Wrightsville will beach harbor is a great, small harbor not you know not a Ton of space there but we had a you know we got all the way back into it had a good spot and the holding there was real good so yeah i wasn't i wasn't even that concerned about it despite the wind it actually went pretty smoothly so i'm uh looking through the photos and i'll post uh, a bunch of these up for you but uh yeah while we were anchored in uh wrightsville beach uh waiting out the storm uh took that time to uh for laura and i to uber into uh, wilmington north carolina which uh Downtown Wilmington is beautiful and had a nice time walking around and exploring uh, some of the old uh, old town Wilmington and found a craft brewery and enjoyed that a couple different breweries and uh, And yeah, so had a little bit of uh, recreation not too much, but had a fun time walking around Wilmington. So uh, anyway um, One of the uh, nice things that we got right that I didn't mention before one of the nice things we got right before we uh, left uh, Norfolk was a convection microwave and so um, actually got one that would fit in the same slot as the old microwave so these gas ovens still on the boat and then I had the option to use convection and that was great we had been using the convection oven uh, sailing all the way down so that was that was a nice little upgrade that wasn't even expensive just popped right in there um, so I thought I mentioned that because I'd forgotten about that so Anyway, um, yeah, so moving on, uh, once we were clear of, uh, once we were clear sailing, uh, or clear from the storm and we're sailing south again, we weren't in a rush, so made uh, another stop at uh, Charleston, South Carolina. Um, had never been to Charleston before and did the same thing. Uh, Ubered into town and had a, a, a she crab soup, uh, which they're famous for at a nice restaurant and found a couple nice breweries and so yeah I enjoyed Charleston also and uh, and then uh, worked our way down and then pretty quickly found ourselves in Savannah and sailing into Savannah we did stop at Hilton Head Island and anchored out there 
Um, I'm not even sure if I have pictures of Hilton Head Island. I, we maybe I think we were, we were only there one night and then moved on the next day. But um, but yeah, then the real memorable thing was docking in downtown Savannah. So downtown Savannah has a uh, very small public dock that is first come first serve, and it's on Savannah River right in downtown. And so we were lucky enough uh, to show up with one space left, just big enough for momentum, and uh, and actually. Uh, even better, it was situated that I could pull in on uh, on the uh, port side, which is better for me because that's where the home station is, or on star starboard side. Excuse me, on starboard side. So yeah, it worked out. We could pull in the, like the way we wanted, and it was the perfect spot. And yeah, so uh, uh, claimed ourselves a little dock space. And while we were docking, there was literally live music playing and like a uh, street fair going on. And yeah, it was pretty crazy. So um, took advantage of some of the. They relax. They usually have a four-hour rule there, but they'd kind of relax those rules for the time after COVID, and it kind of they were still sticking around those rules. And and basically, the rules would allow you to stay up to two days. Um, at least that's what I read. And I don't know if they were still doing that uh, when we were there or not. But it was a weekend, and um, and nobody was there to tell you any different. So we stayed till Monday morning. Um, so yeah, it was a real nice time to explore around downtown Savannah, and really nice as always being on a boat where you can go in and enjoy restaurants you can have a beer you don't have to worry about driving i just i love boat life for that and and you're you don't have any lodging expense in you know anywhere you go it's it's pretty amazing i do love that about boat life anyway so uh yeah so savannah uh once uh once i had to leave savannah river because i couldn't stay there there's no to anchor in savannah river and unfortunately the intercoastal waterway which runs through there uh momentum is mast is too high so there was no way to quickly go anywhere uh, else in savannah with momentum so we had to go all the way back out to sea and come up another inlet uh, that was further south uh, and then uh, i was able to find a place to anchor for a while and pretty quickly uh, just by um, you know cruising around with the dinghy and talking to people um, i was able to find a little dock uh, where i could tie up momentum and with the whole reason normally I wouldn't need a dock but I really wanted to address some of the the marks and scrapes and damage that, that was on the side of the boat the side of the hulls uh, because it, ever since we bought it it's had those marks and scars and patches and just you could see it and it just didn't look very good to me so with my fiberglassing skills I figured in a dock in time I figured I better get to work um, kind of cleaning up the appearance so um, the only way to really work on the side was to have a floating dock um, and tie up to it and so yeah so I was lucky enough to find one that um, although it wasn't tied to land um, that was you know it was like we were anchored out but I was lucky enough to find a floating dock uh, at a cheap price because it was um, not attached and had no utilities um, that made it uh, reasonably affordable to tie up to so yeah and uh, so I had my own private dock uh, I guess uh, is a bonus except I had to dinghy to shore every time but uh, yeah, so then got started working on the fiberglass repairs and just tackling everything else I could do on the boat. And the um, the thing I wanted the most to do uh, was the washer and dryer. And uh, so yeah, ordered the same washer and dryer from Thin the RV that we already knew we loved. I love that those washer and dryers. I'm never going to go back to a conventional washer dryer unit. These things work so good. Um, and I and I shouldn't say. All those combo washer dryers don't work so good, but this little uh, LG, I'll put a picture, I mean, you'll see it on here, I think it's LG, I don't remember the brand, but these these top of the line uh, modern ones, man, they are great, and you can get them in larger sizes, I mean, definitely the way to go, so. Anyway, while I was doing uh, the washer, the new washer install, and ripping out the old washer dryer, um, I went ahead and installed the Clean Start, and and if anyone doesn't know what a clean start is, I'll put a picture of it up here. The clean start is a, is it an ozonator? I think it's an ozonator. It is, it empowers the water so that you don't need to use laundry soap in your washing machine. And so uh, really wanted to use that on the boat because I didn't want to be putting washing machine detergent into the water. Um, and, you know, we're trying to keep the boat as environmentally friendly as possible. So. It made great sense if you're going to do a washing machine on a boat to do an ozonator and not use any detergent and so installed the clean start in there and working under the sink in uh, momentum was something because uh, 
also under the sink is a fire extinguisher and a water filter and the water treatment system for the drinking water which is using um it's not that one doesn't use ozonator i think it uses a uv light or something so yeah uh, so there's a um so there's two different treatment systems multiple filters treatment systems fire extinguisher and then trying to put the clean start and all the pipes and then all the electrical to everything and all the drains for everything it was actually kind of nuts but um but yeah just managed to pack it all in there beautifully and actually fix some of the stuff that was kind of janky from before um cleaned up some of the electrical and and that so um so yeah that uh, washing machine install um went good and then the real dilemma with the washing machine was to um, figure out how to make it look a little nicer and and the paneling that had been around the old one was pretty rough and decided it was actually better just to leave the paneling off but then definitely had to do something about the top because that white board wasn't really a good choice and so ended up figuring out a butcher block top that looked really nice got a nice thick butcher block and then cut it and carved it to fit and uh and then uh treated it and you know eventually got it all built in and perfectly leveled with the countertop and it worked so much better than the old surface and then um at this point you know just left the washer and dryer exposed it looked fine it looked as good as it could look um paneling around it we didn't really have i didn't really have any good option for paneling that would look any better so than just the side of the washing machine so just um just uh installed it right there with uh without a lot of paneling around it and it worked great so yeah that was a big thing and uh so at this point of my story um i am um, in Savannah, Georgia, and my floating dock where I stayed actually for uh, several months. And so during that time, I just uh, continued to plug away at multiple, multiple little tasks on momentum. So, um, so lots of little things, uh, mostly working on the exterior. Anytime it was warm enough, because you have to have warm weather to put a, a gel coat, to do gel coat. So every single moment that it got warm enough to gel coat, I was out gel coating. But the rest of the time, I was sanding and fairing and fiberglassing and just, you know, the boat, the side of the boat's immense, um, so I never ran out of work on it, but, uh, but eventually got gel coat, multiple gel coat coats, um, and, uh, and really started to get the sides looking real good, and I think, like I said, I worked, uh, kind of reformatted the helm station with an iPad holder, and, um, put in new, um, power, what do you call it, USB plugs, um and uh cigarette lighter plugs and that kind of stuff i replaced all those because they were getting bad um and then tons of other little you know tasks that that you know boats need just pump replacements and on and on and on uh just just kept busy with boat projects trying to make the boat more valuable while it was listed for sale um so yeah that uh that's that's how those months went now also during that time um i kind of had the thoughts that i might want to stay in that savannah area and so um so i took that I, I i had an opportunity i had some free time and i thought well this living in this living for months in a city with no car was getting really old i mean i would have to walk anywhere i wanted to go on my little island i lived on and uh now it was nice that my dad um did end up uh, having a job in town and actually had a house in savannah so you know even i i wasn't totally stuck on my island because every once in a while you know, my dad would come pick me up and I could visit and I could use his car for stuff. But, uh, but for the, I mean, really, uh, truly I did live without a car for a long time. So, um, so since we still had the Tesla, the Tesla model three never sold, we had it for sale. Tesla values were kind of dropping at that time and kind of was depressing, uh, how far the price, the value was dropping on it. And I thought, well, geez, I could really stand to have a car anyway. And so I, um, took that opportunity and flew up to Oregon and picked up the Model 3, and I drove it uh, diagonally cross-country in the middle of winter. Uh, literally, at this point, it is, um, like, middle of January, <laughs> and I am driving the Tesla across the entire country diagonally in winter, and I did it without any pre-planning, and I had to do it in five days, because I had an obligation five days later, and uh, so, yeah, that, that was an adventure, and, um, and if anyone's curious, I mean, it's not really the this isn't a Tesla. I, I get kind of some sidetracked sometimes talking about Tesla, I know, but, uh, but yeah, so the car did incredible. I mean, it was, it was not a difficult trip. It was a pleasure. It was the nicest cross-country trip I've ever done, honestly. 
Um, I had uh, auto, you know, I had full self driving on the car. I let the, other than when the weather was foul, which was like, you know, half the trip, but the rest of the time I let the car do a lot of driving and it was, it drove perfectly and it was so nice. And um, in fact, I have a few little clips. Uh, I have some pictures of that drive. I have a few little clips. So I'll probably stick in a little clip here of the car driving just so you can see. It's pretty cool. I mean, even in bad condition, even in like rain and stuff, it, it did fine. It never faltered. Um, so that was nice. Here's an example of Lily's driving. She drives really well. Especially in dense traffic, she's super good. Um, having a, having a co-pilot on a, such a long drive. And so, yeah, but I had, uh, all my stops were nice. I didn't stay at real fancy hotels. I did stay at a couple that had Tesla chargers at them, which made, meant every morning I, or every night I'd arrive empty and every morning I'd leave full. And it really speeds up the trip when you can do that. Um, so I stayed only places where I could charge and then that meant that I only had to stop and charge You know, I didn't have to stop and charge a ton um, But on my trip down my fourth night I actually stopped at my friend's house in Georgia and I got to check in on Finn the RV um, And so that was good. Uh, but then yeah, I made it in five days. Um, I was back and uh, back at it on the boat and well, Then I had a car which really helped because then I could run around and get supplies and do things and just really uh, improved my quality of life. Um, I mean, I, I enjoy boat life and can do without a car, but uh, but yeah, I really enjoyed then actually having a car and being able to get around. So um, so yeah, that's that's how that went. But anyway, um, yeah. So let's see what else uh, what do I want to tell you about? Yeah. So uh, I guess in kind of in closing, uh, the uh, my time most of my time over the winter was spent in Savannah. And really, Savannah is a pretty nice place to spend a winter, uh, I have to say. I really liked Savannah and got to know the, the community a little bit. Um, it was nice. Uh, Laura came down and visited me for a week after she, you know, she sailed down initially, but she came back and visited for a week. And so we had a, uh, the two of us were able to explore around Savannah together for uh, also, which was nice. And of course, we did that for a couple of days when we first sailed in. So, um, so yeah, um, all in all, Savannah was good. I spent, got to spend a lot of time with my dad and his new wife Valerie so um, so I enjoyed that too and in fact once uh, we'll get into that in future video you'll see that um, I ended up parking at their house with the RV for a while and visiting them before I left Georgia so um, so yeah that that's how that went and um, and now uh, I think that will actually conclude most of my uh, stuff I have to narrate because um, as it got into uh, as it got into 2023 my uh, how do you say, my enthusiasm for filming again started to come back, and so I um, won't have to do this narrating thing anymore because I know it's not the funnest kind of video to do. So yeah, my uh, my motivation for filming got better, and and uh, so when I uh, when we pick up the next time, um, it'll be me back live again, and uh, or not really, I guess not live, I guess it's a better way to say it, it'll be me uh, live on a video, not narrating and showing pictures uh, as much. So yeah, um, that's what's coming up next. Um, is uh, the rest of my time in Georgia and then and then will be uh, following me across country as I make my way back